The Radio Forest Podcast. Gary Hoey here. Gary Hoey, there you are, man. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing, brother? Good. It's so good to talk to you every year. And every year, you're busy. You've got stuff going on. So get me caught up. You've got a new song. You've got a tour kicking off. You've got a cruise into 2024. Oh, yeah, man. It's it's uh, it's an exciting end of this year and going into the new year. A lot of a lot of fun stuff happening. The Ho Ho Hoey tour is kicking off uh, the day after Thanksgiving. I can't believe it's been 28 years that uh, we've been out doing this, and it's uh, great to be, you know, part of people's tradition and uh, have a new single out, the Nutcracker Sugar Plum Fairy, which I, which I did, which is uh, probably got Tchaikovsky rolling around in his grave right now. <laughs> How do you figure out what you want to do? Is it just jamming in your house, and then you're like, well, I haven't done this? Because you've gone through pretty much every hit live and through your recordings. You've pretty much touched on them all. So is it hard to, to get inspired to come out with a new flavor, so to speak? Well, I always kind of look at and see if there's a song I can do that I can reinvent a little bit and try something you know different with it. With the Nutcracker, I've always thought it was just a cool song and just a, a, a eerie kind of melody. So one day I was sitting around and I'm thinking... Wow, I wonder if I gave it like a Roddy James Dio kind of. <laughs> you know, I always wanted to ask you with your tight connection to Ozzy, what was your favorite era as a fan of Ozzy's music? Because for me, you know, there's Sabbath, there's the 80s, then he had that revival in the 90s, and then there's the current Ozzy that, you know, has had a couple of albums in the last few years. What's your go-to favorite era and music style of Ozzy? Well, for me, you know, I mean, it, it kind of goes back to, it goes back a lot to the original Black Sabbath riffs for me. I mean, I love Ozzy stuff. I love the modern stuff that he did, you know, that, you know, that, you know. <laughs> You know, all that stuff and, you know, No More Tears and all those songs, you know, Crazy Train. I loved all that stuff, but I still go back to like. You know, going back to the early records and just that, you know, that whole that just, you know. Paranoid and uh, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Fairies wear boots, just, you know, just that, just that. It just had such a groove to it. Did you ever have a chance then to run into Tony Iommi, just as much of an influence as he's been? But you're always connected to Ozzy, but it really sounds like you really gravitate towards the riffs from Tony. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Tony Iommi, I met him one time uh, when I was doing a rock and roll fantasy camp. He came in as a guest, and I was absolutely the biggest fanboy. I mean, I was so excited to meet him, and he was a super nice guy. And, uh, you know, just to see what he did as a guitarist, what he created as far as the riffs and the songs, and the fact that he had, you know, had a tragic, tragic injury, and, and then he tuned his guitar down three half steps so the strings were slinkier so that he could continue to play because he loved to play the guitar, and he didn't know... He was creating this sound that was so deep and so heavy out of his necessity to want to play. He, he wasn't doing it because he wanted to tune down. He had to. So it's interesting how sometimes the challenges in life can create something really innovative that we have no idea is going to happen. And talk to me about working with Lita Ford on that album. How was that? You got involved with the songwriting then, and also you did some performances live, right? But with your schedule, you couldn't do the full tour. Yeah, we did uh, We did some shows live to kind of help her get the album off the ground and get the tour going, and uh, and it was a lot of fun. And then we just finished another album that's going to be coming out in the new year that's a fantastic record. She's definitely uh, firing on all cylinders right now. She's in, in great shape vocally, musically, physically. And we played last Friday night. We had a gig um, close to my home in New Hampshire, and we, we did a double bill, and then my, my son came down. He's now 22, and he played guitar with me and came up and did Red House and got a standing ovation. He just blew everybody's mind. And uh, Lita's just, she's such a dear friend of mine and just really, you know, somebody that I, I care about. And I feel like she's 
just such an iconic musician from, you know, the Runaways into working with Ozzy and her solo career. She's done so much um, breakthrough and innovative things that uh, I have so much respect for her. So with you trying out for Ozzy and Lita having that huge hit with Ozzy, when you guys were together, did you jam any Ozzy with you on the guitar and her doing some vocals, like some cover stuff just in the studio or sound check? Well, I've never, I mean, I've never played, I've jammed some of the Ozzy stuff with her. I've never played with her and Ozzy. That would have been, <laughs> that would have been the ultimate. But uh, we have jammed some Ozzy songs. And it's funny because Lita is, she's as big of a fan of Black Sabbath as, as I am. Like when we met, we have a lot of the same influences musically because she loved a lot of the early Black Sabbath stuff. She loved the Ramones. She loved like that punk rock kind of style. And uh, Richie Blackmore, she was a big fan of. So we had like a kind of a kindred musical soul. You know what I mean? Can you hit me with some more Sabbath or some more Ozzy? I love hearing you play. Even over the phone, I still get excited. Oh, absolutely, man. When I was playing with Ozzy, I remember we did... Uh, we did. Uh... <laughs> Now, I know you're an incredible soloist, but correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you're a little more inspired, you know, talking to you every year. I'm starting to kind of get the picture. You kind of gravitate towards just cool riffs, don't you? Is that what really gets you excited? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I always love I always love a good solo. You know, it, a good solo is always fun to do. But for me, playing like something that's, you know, like if I play... Or what if I do like, you know... Like yeah. a Sabbath, bloody Sabbath, like yeah. that. That's to me. That's just the chunk right there. I can just do that all day. So <laughs> now this has me thinking about two artists that I always think of when it comes to these iconic riffs. And I'm going to put you under the spotlight, but you're such a well-trained musician and you've got so much experience. I'm pretty confident you'll know a couple of songs. So one though, you got to know some Led Zeppelin, then, right? Jimmy Page. I mean, just an icon with recognizable song riffs. Absolutely. I mean, to me, Jimmy Page was an amazing, you know, composer, the way that he created riffs, whether it was, you know, you know, or or even like... that like you know you know what I mean that kind of stuff other one I was thinking of was James Hetfield from Metallica not so much Kirk Hammett because I think I think James even has riff like riff life or something like that tattooed on his knuckles so you have to know some Metallica for sure then oh yeah or well, Metallica I would probably go with uh there's one i can remember right now <laughs> that's awesome now um when you get the the string to squeal like that you know it's a little bit of a palm muting and a little bit of the picking i can't quite get it you flow in and out of it so fast. Now, I can't see you, but any advice on how to, to get that pitch harmonics? Yeah, you know, the way that you want to get the, the, with, uh, the pick squealies or whatever you call them, harmonic squeals, what you have to do is it's, it's a combination of when you're holding the guitar pick, you actually want to choke up on it like you would on a bat. You know, you want to choke up on the bat and not have so much of the bat hanging out, so much of the pick. So what you do is you pull the pick a little bit back into your thumb, and then you turn your uh, wrist and you let your thumb, the flesh of the thumb, actually needs to catch the string. So I'll give you an example. Like if I go the ultimate squeal guy, if I go. OK, 
okay, that's where you're going to squeal it. Or if you do like an Aussie thing, like. And you also have to move your hand from, don't just keep it on the bridge. You've got to slide it a little bit toward the neck and kind of find where the harmonics land. And if you move your hand a little bit, you'll kind of start hitting some of those. But that's a, uh, the tip I could, best tip I could give over the phone. <laughs> so, so can you do pitch harmonics on every note, or is it based off which notes will squeal better? Or can you do it on any note? Exactly. There, there's, it's not so much every note. It's there's positions that will squeal, and there's some that don't so much. And it's weird when you're a guitarist because sometimes you want the note to squeal like right when you want it, and that's usually when it doesn't. So it's, it's a little bit of a haphazard thing. You have to kind of like, if you're playing a, like a riff or something, you're going. You know, and Eddie Van Halen used to do a thing where he would move his hand down the neck going like. And it would give you all these different harmonics. So you've got to experiment a little bit. And the more you do it, the more you'll be able to hit them when you want them. But it's really... Um, a weird mystical, magical thing that doesn't yeah. always happen, unfortunately. So Gary's got the new song, The Nutcracker, Sugar Plum Fairy. You can stream it online or you can find it at GaryHoey.com. His uh, Ho Ho Hoey Rock and Holiday Tour is kicking off after Thanksgiving. He's got a killer cruise with a ton of stars in 2024. And is the Fender giveaway happening this year at GaryHoey.com? Yes, it is. Thanks for the call. We'll talk to you uh, next holiday, Gary. Yes, absolutely. I always love talking to you. You you always take it to a place that uh, is so fun, and I truly want to thank you so much for always having me on, my brother.